Even among the notorious members of the biker gang known as the Mongols, there is a name that strikes fear into their hearts. Referred to as Scott Jr., this certain member is not someone you would want to mess with. But what exactly earned him such respect and fear has a deep and mysterious history. Join us in today's video as we explore the real reasons behind this biker who even the Hell's Angels fear. The Mongols Motorcycle Gang, once a mainstream club formed in Montebello, California in 1969, swiftly transformed into one of America's most notorious motorcycle communities within a mere 15 years. Renowned for their penchant for violence, the Mongols are infamous for committing acts of assault, intimidation, and even murder to protect their turf and uphold their club's reputation. Their criminal activities extended to racially motivated violence, targeting not only African-American gang members but also innocent civilians of color. Such nefarious deeds earned the Mongols the dubious distinction of being labeled by the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms as the most violent and dangerous OMG in America. Now, did you know that the majority of Mongols members are Hispanic males residing in the Los Angeles region, many of whom boast a background in street gangs and a proclivity for resolving conflicts through violence? Among these infamous figures is Scott Jr. Erickson, a prominent member of the gang. Scott Jr. Erickson became a member of the Mongols Motorcycle Club in 1980. He witnessed the club's evolution from a small group in California to a global phenomenon, serving as national club president four times, a pivotal factor in the club's current international renown. Jr. dedicated his life to the Mongols, emphasizing their identity as more than just a motorcycle club. They were a brotherhood that he risked his life for over three decades. Now let's move on to his origins. Born Scott Erickson in 1960 in San Diego, California, he grew up in a loving environment in one of the city's nicer neighborhoods. Despite his privileged upbringing, Junior still found himself entangled in the typical teenage misadventures like smoking weed and engaging in fights with his friends around San Diego. It was in 1974, during a fishing trip to a lake, that he encountered a ferocious-looking biker adorned with Mongols Motorcycle Club insignia, leaving a lasting impression on the 14-year-old Junior. By age 16, Junior had gained a reputation as a tough individual, playing football aggressively and frequently getting into fights. His family's temporary move to Hawaii during his final years of high school did little to quench his wanderlust for distant lands like Hawaii, Paris, Jamaica, and even Africa. While continuing his athletic pursuits, Junior and his friends established a boxing club, leading to his participation in amateur competitions where he remained undefeated. However, there was something he couldn't forget about easily. The image of the biker at the lake remained etched in his mind, fueling his fascination with motorcycles. After high school, Junior returned to San Diego, working on a construction site to save up for a motorcycle. When his savings fell short, he resorted to selling weed, eventually acquiring a Harley-Davidson Superglide in 1978 at the age of 18. With his new bike, Junior rode around town, immersing himself in biker culture and learning about the ongoing turf war between the Hells Angels and the Mongols over California's territories, a conflict with deadly consequences. At just 19, Junior found himself barred from most places due to his age. However, a chance encounter with a Mongol changed everything. Assured by the Mongol that riding with the club granted access anywhere, Junior began joining their weekend escapades, eventually earning an invite to their San Diego clubhouse. Though not yet a full member, Junior felt a deep sense of brotherhood among the Mongols, reveling in their wild parties and nomadic lifestyle. Yet beneath the surface of revelry, lay a darker truth. The outlaw biker life was rife with danger and enemies. Riding with the Mongols meant adopting their adversaries as one's own. Armed to the teeth, the Mongols faced constant threats, but Junior relied on his strength, boasting an amazing physique honed through gym visits. Despite his young age, Junior threw himself into the club's activities, from bar brawls to debt collection, earning the respect of his peers. Recognized as a loyal brother, Junior became the youngest prospect in the club's history, eventually earning his patch through unwavering dedication. But with membership came a deadly reality check. Junior witnessed the deaths of three fellow Mongols within his first year, and soon found himself embroiled in a fatal altercation with a rival gang, resulting in casualties and a media frenzy, labeling the Mongols as perpetrators. Fleeing from the fallout, 
Junior sought refuge with his Mongol brothers in Tulsa, adopting a new identity to evade authorities. However, news of his brother's arrests thrust him into another round of evasion, forcing him to conceal himself in Oklahoma for six tense months. Upon learning of the arrest warrant for his involvement in a murder case, Junior decided to face his fate and return to San Diego. The club rallied behind him, providing legal representation that secured a plea deal for voluntary manslaughter, sparing him a life sentence. Despite being the one who pulled the trigger, Junior refused to let his brothers take the fall, willingly surrendering himself to authorities. After serving his sentence, Junior stayed in touch with his Mongol brothers, staying at the forefront of all club matters. Upon his release from parole, he swiftly ascended the ranks within the club, eventually becoming the vice president of the San Diego chapter and later the national president at a remarkably young age. However, his tenure was marked by a violent clash that thrust the Mongols into the spotlight, solidifying Junior's reputation as a fierce protector of his club. Despite his dedication to the Mongols, Junior's personal life suffered, with attempts to leave the club for a quieter life proving futile. By age 35, he had served as national president multiple times, ensuring the club adhered to its principles. Yet in 1998, a bar altercation led to Junior's arrest, sparking a legal battle where his claims of self-defense fell on deaf ears, as authorities relished in apprehending the notorious Mongols president. Did you know that the Mongols biker gang, along with holding a notorious reputation as one of America's most perilous gangs, is also involved in hundreds of criminal activities? At one point, authorities attempted to prohibit Mongols from wearing their jackets or any apparel featuring the gang's emblem. However, a California judge later overturned this decision, citing violations of constitutional rights such as freedom of association. Moreover, members of the Mongols have devised their own secret language for covert communication. For instance, they use terms like Code 55 to signal the need to conceal their gang affiliation by refraining from displaying any Mongols-related insignia or attire. This covert communication strategy enables them to operate discreetly and avoid detection by law enforcement. Mongols members boast a notorious track record in illicit activities such as drug trafficking, money laundering, theft, extortion, murder, and assault. These criminal exploits have solidified their reputation as one of the most dreaded biker clubs in the U.S. And guess what? At one point, they faced a staggering 270 warrants simultaneously and were initially prohibited from displaying their trademark emblem. Although this ban was eventually lifted, the club was slapped with a mere half-million-dollar fine, which seemed like a minor consequence for these self-professed outlaws. In 2002, tensions between Mongols and Hell's Angels erupted at Harrah's Laughlin Casino in Nevada, resulting in the deaths of three bikers. Two Hell's Angels members received two-year prison sentences in 2007 for their involvement in the incident. The year 2008 marked a significant blow to the club when it was infiltrated by four ATF agents in Operation Black Rain. This operation led to the arrest of 38 Mongols, including their then-national president, Ruben Doc Cavazos, who was subsequently ousted from the club. Additionally, Christopher Ablett surrendered to authorities in 2008 after evading capture for the murder of Hells Angels president, Mark Papa Guardado, in San Francisco. In the same year, a clash between Mongols and Hells Angels in Las Vegas left three Mongols hospitalized, highlighting the ongoing tensions between the rival gangs. In a separate incident in 2014, Mongols member David Martinez allegedly killed a Pomona police SWAT team member in San Gabriel, California. Martinez faces capital murder charges with the prosecution linking him to a Mongols chapter in Montebello, California. The history of the Mongols shows us what a prominent presence they have in the underworld but it also sheds light on the contentious relationship between law enforcement and biker gangs. Innocent individuals have often been ensnared in legal battles, serving lengthy sentences for crimes they did not commit. Despite facing such adversity, individuals like Scott Jr. Erickson have remained extremely loyal to their club, symbolizing the deep-rooted camaraderie within the Mongols' nation.